our success in this century will not be defined by how much we can accomplish alone, but rather by how well we can create international networks and profit from this global exchange of ideas. Yet science goes beyond any individual country's border. And CERN is a perfect example for that. The success of their project exemplify what can be accomplished through international scientific collaboration. There are so many bright minds out there, and it must be our goal to continue to bring them together, to offer them a platform to work together successfully. Today we have 20 European member states and we have some important countries also as observer and one in the top list here is the United States. Today, so more than 55 years after the creation of CERN, CERN is really the world's largest particle physics laboratory with more than 10,000 scientists from more than 60 countries using the large infrastructures at CERN. And so the Collaboration between CERN and the US is a long tradition. More than 30 years we are collaborating very, in a very excellent way between uh, scientists from the States and from, from Europe at CERN. The US participates very significantly in both the machine and all of the major experiments there. Atlas, CMS, ALICE and NHCB. We're about one third of the manpower on the CMS experiment and one fifth of the manpower on the ATLAS experiment. There's more than 1,700 of us, scientists, students, engineers and technicians, 101 institutes in the United States from 32 countries and from Puerto Rico. It's a very different time, but a very exciting time. And I think that hopefully that, that um, the, uh, the uh, um, LHC will, will be able to guide us into a new era so we can have this next major breakthrough, which we uh, get some, uh, somehow or another come through and understand what dark matter is, where this dark energy concept comes from, why are there three families. All these things are things that we just would love to understand. And it, it surely, the 20, surely we can hope that the 21st century does that for us. From my point of view, cosmology, just looking at the universe, in fact, just the fact that you're in this room, provides com strong and completely independent arguments for new particles, new <laughs> symmetries, and not just at any old energy level, but at scales that should be right around the corner at our next generation of colliders, in fact, our current generation of colliders, I should say. Now, so is a marvelous opportunity for this interplay between precision cosmology, which we've had now for the past decade or so, and will continue to have for the next 20, 30 years, who knows how long, and particle physics experiments like the LHC to give us an understanding of the universe back to 10 to the minus 8 seconds, perhaps even 10 to the minus 10 seconds. It will be a seminal moment in the development of physics. It will be like the time Galileo pointed his telescope to the sky for the first time in 1608. Galileo told us, that we were not the center of the universe. He did that with his telescope. Similarly, great discoveries are just around the corner. We may learn what is the origin of mass. And that is not just an academic question. It tells us why matter exists, how atoms can exist, how life can be possible. We may learn about the nature of dark matter, about the nature of dark energy, and the number of spatial dimensions in which we live.